Welcome to PLG TV Spotlight. I'm Matt Gordon. Today we're spotlighting the Stephen Foster story. Now the Stephen Foster story holds a lot of importance, not just right here in the community of Bardstown, but in the entire state of Kentucky. Now Stephen Foster wrote the state song, My Old Kentucky Home, which is sang every year at the Great Kentucky Derby. Now a lot of people didn't know this, but this season, which is the 60th season of the Stephen Foster story, almost didn't happen. Now earlier this year, state officials came in and examined the amphitheater, the J. Dan Talbot Amphitheater, and deemed it unsafe and closed it, which they thought uh, it would be closed for good. And a lot of the people here thought, you know, this season, the 60th season was in jeopardy. Now it's been a long, hard road and it's taken a lot of dedication and a lot of community effort to get this season back together. Now I'm gonna take you on an inside track to see what happened along the ride. We're in a very difficult position right now with the Stephen Foster Drama Association. Um, we have been concerned for many years about the state of the amphitheater. We've been asking for help from the state for many years to address structural concerns, safety issues. Um, safety is our main priority and it will continue to be. That's why we've been asking for help for a long time. It, we're saddened, we're angry that that request has led to this moment that we've tried so desperately to avoid. The state has spoken clearly that they do not want to see the Stephen Foster story go away. And yet very little has been done to keep that from happening for so many years. So now we believe that we have an opportunity to take this situation with help from our local support, our city and county government, our community, to make the necessary repairs and the necessary decisions to create a safe space here at the amphitheater for us to perform the 60th anniversary season of the Stephen Foster story right here where it was created to be, where it was meant to be, where it needs to be. So what you can do now is reach out with us for support, contacting your local officials and requesting that if the state cannot address these needs, that we be allowed an opportunity to address them with the help of our community so that we can continue a legacy of something that has been so valuable to this community and to all of the people involved, all of the families who have been in the show, brought their children to the shows, uh, all of our concert ticket holders who love spending time here in their own community with great entertainment. We desperately need to con continue that tradition and that's what we're fighting for now. We're fighting for an opportunity to do whatever we need to to create a safe space to perform this summer. So what are the uh, the options as of right now as the, the state has given you? We were working with the state on a plan um, to address necessary uh, concerns, which there are many. There are many. This facility has been neglected for a very long time um, with minimal repairs and, and minimal atten attention being paid to it. Um, knowing that, we thought we had a plan to address those concerns, um, and that has always been the case where we've addressed those concerns um, so that we can function e each season. The plan changed um, overnight and, and without our knowledge, and we were notified that the power was being shut off and that there would be no option to perform in the amphitheater this summer. At this point, we don't want to accept that. We do believe that we can create a safe space and we want the opportunity to do that. 
and of course Bardstown's very own Mayor Dick Heaton and the County Judge Executive Dean Watts are closely tied to the Stephen Foster story. What are some of the things you guys had to go through to uh, get the theater open this year? Well first, our first meeting with the uh, officials in Frankfurt was December 21st of, of this past year. And at that meeting, uh, it was very obvious the state wasn't going to put any more money into the amphitheater uh, area there. So, uh, in order to keep the uh, 60th season alive, to keep the amphitheater going in our community, it has become a part of the thread of our community, and it, it is a very important part of our community. And so the mayor, myself, and the other officials, have, uh, we've dedicated the last uh, five or six months uh, working with state to get us to, to where we are today. We have actually uh, now access to, full access to the properties. Uh, the renovations have been done strictly for, uh, or repairs, let me go back, the repairs have been done to allow us to do this, this season. Uh, we've deemed it safe, uh, and the state has deemed it safe as well. So we're moving forward with this season. Now, we just also are working on, at the end of the season, to do a complete, demolition of the stage area. You know, when you get back there, Matt, you've been back there probably before already, I'm sure. Yeah. It's much larger, it's much much more uh, there than the eye sees. And, and it's going to be very costly to replace that. So we're going to the community here, here in the next few days, probably, uh, with a final cost of what we're going to be looking at spending and try to get uh, private uh, sector helping to help fund the project. We've already got some commitments out of tourism or getting some commitments out of tourism and some other private um, corporations and soon we'll be asking the community at large for some help as well. So uh, if kind of on a personal level, uh, why was it that you, you decided to, to work so hard to, uh, to bring the Stephen Foster story back for not only just another season but the anniversary, the 60th season of the Stephen well, Matt, Foster story? Well you can look at uh, Bardstown and Nelson County, Bardstown in particular. Um, there are a lot of great small cities around the world. There's a lot of great small cities in Kentucky. But the um, quality of life, the living experience that we have in Barstown Nelson County is brought about by things such as the Stephen Foster story, the amphitheater project, the Civil War Museum, the Railroad Museum. Uh, all, all these become part of our community and we own them. Now the rest of the state uh, wanted to abandon the amphitheater and uh, and the show itself and of course the state kind of probably knew that we weren't going to let that happen uh, or some of us weren't going to let that happen mm -hmm. and but so it has become a part of our, well, who we are and so that's important to me uh, when you go recruiting industry you go uh, talking to people from uh, uh, overseas mm -hmm. about coming here why should we choose Bardstown and Nelson County over 50 other communities around the country. And so separating ourselves and making us a little different, making us a, uh, a special place to live is important, and this is a part of that. And uh, it, it's important to me. Uh, I, 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 60 years ago, I was born, <laughs> 1957. And, and so, but this is important, and I, I think the legacy, the legacy of the community for the next 100 years will be that we have preserved a part of history. The infamous day was December 21st, 2017, where the judge and I drove up together and met with Senator Higdon and Representative McCoy with uh, parks officials. Uh, they gave us the news that day of their plan, and uh, at that point, we had already heard in, in advance what the meeting was about, so we had already started talking about, uh, you know, some alternative plans if we could uh, try to get the uh, safety issue maybe stabilized so that we could open for the 60th season and then um, get a full bore uh, renovation project in place uh, after this season because we were on such a tight uh, time frame. December 21st, the show opens, uh, they start uh, rehearsals in May, didn't give you a lot of time. So that's what we talked about uh, during that visit. And we left with the understanding that uh, we, we had two weeks to uh, put together a plan and come back and meet with them again to uh, a plan to stabilize the, the theater on the most major safety issues uh, right now and then get this 
show open for the 60th season and then do the major project after that. Uh, we were somewhat taken aback when uh, we found out within 24 hours that they gave us the letter to close and, and uh, for the staff to move uh, out of the offices. That was somewhat of a shock and uh, wasn't exactly the understanding we had when we left Frankfurt that afternoon on December 21st. Well, certainly that was a shock and something that was, uh, you know, uh, a devastating news. Uh, you know, on a personal level, uh, myself and my family, we have a 40-year history uh, serving on that board. My father served on the board for 24 years, and then I came on after he uh, died and served for 16 years. And he served 24 years as chairman. I served for eight years as chairman. So. Just my father and I alone have served for 32 years of the 60 years as chairman of that organization. So I have a very personal connection. I literally grew up with uh, Stephen Foster and the musical and so forth. So uh, it's personal, but it also, yes, is a, is a huge asset to our community. Uh, it's one that people may not know how important uh, of a role that uh, the Stephen Foster story and the singers particularly have played in terms of economic development. You know, we can't afford to lose this. Uh, it's just a tremendous uh, tourist attraction. Uh, as I said earlier, it has a major plus for us in terms of economic development and quality of life. You know, the shows are not just for tourists. They have a number of shows, uh, uh, concerts throughout the summer that are well attended by locals. So it, 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 it serves a broad uh, specter of, for entertainment here. The, where are they? exciting point right now because the temporary repair work that was necessary for us to gain occupancy to to run our 2018 season has been completed um, literally just this morning um, the work has been completed structural electrical and safety improvements that needed to be made uh, have been made and all of the documentation of that has been submitted to Frankfurt and now we're just waiting for our certificate of occupancy uh, that will allow us to officially get in um, and rehearse our season. Uh, the, actually, the first event that we have is our Bethlehem High School graduation. Uh, so we're working hard to get that certificate in time for their rehearsal to take place. And then we'll roll right in with the Stephen Foster cast, rehearsing the Stephen Foster story. And uh, I just could not be more thankful uh, to the city and county and community support that we've had doing the work to get us to this point. Of course fundraising had to be done. That's where the Stephen Foster Drama Association's biggest fundraiser comes into play. The beautiful Dreamers Ball. And of course this being the 60th anniversary, this year was going to be big. Thank you Leslie. Barstown Bourbon Company is thrilled to be a sponsor of this event that benefits the Stephen Foster Drama Association. Not many small towns offer such a dynamic entertainment in an outdoor venue surrounded by a beautiful state park. It's also a unique attraction that draws not only people locally, but tourists from all over the United States and other countries. I'm excited to welcome you to the annual meeting of the Stephen Foster Drama Association 2018. For more than 10 years, the Drama Association board and staff have been requesting that the state-owned and maintained amphitheater receive much needed attention. In 2008, $1.2 million was allocated in the state budget to rebuild the amphitheater. That money was swept to fund the Kentucky Horse Park in preparation for the World Equestrian Games. Most recently, the result of three inspections from different agencies brought to light many of the items of concern that we had been asking the state to address. Their response was that there was no money in State Park's budget for these repairs and no time to complete them. At that time, which was mid-December, we asked for an opportunity to make the repairs ourselves through a combination of what would, we would hope would become a fundraising effort from the Drama Association, in-kind donation, um, local resources, in a meeting between me, me, myself, me, whichever is appropriate, <laughs> me, two of our board members, 
um, Senator Higdon, Representative McCoy, State Parks representatives, and Tourism, Arts, and Heritage representatives, we were told that we would be given the opportunity to address those repairs ourselves. Two weeks later, with no further discussion or prior knowledge, that plan was changed and the state issued a press release stating that the amphitheater was closed. A short time later, the same decision was made concerning the Jenny Wiley Amphitheater in Prestonsburg, Kentucky. As you know, because you all participated, there was an incredible outcry of support across social media platforms, the media, and the telephones and emails in Frankfurt. That outcry was heard, and it was heard loud and clear. Or loudly, if you're a stickler <laughs> for grammar. <clears throat> we met immediately with our elected officials, and a plan was presented to the state for our local county government to accept a lease of the property. After various avenues of local support, donations, and in-kind work, we would tear down the stage walls and rebuild as much as necessary to get through this summer. The county signed a lease with the state. Many thanks to Judge Watts and county magistrates. A team was assembled under the leadership of County Judge Executive Dean Watts and Mayor Dick Heaton to complete this work. I would like to stop right now and recognize that team who've been working so diligently on this project. Um, Donald Blinko, Music Construction, Tim Sharp and Nikki Rapier with Salt River Electric, Jim Lameau is our project manager, Brad Spaulding, a county engineer, John Greenwell, county engineer, Jeff Mills, a recently retired city electrical engineer, and Leslie Blinko, chair of the board of the Stephen Foster Drama Association, and an engineer. <laughs> Now, you did just mention Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, the Stephen Foster stories has quite a following in Japan. Absolutely. So what was that experience like? That was such a surreal experience. Uh, I hadn't been out of the country outside of Canada or Mexico uh, until that point. So the fact that I was going to Japan, you know, it's like a 13-hour-plus flight uh, with the Stephen Foster story, you know, these folks had requested our presence at this, mm -hmm. this basically a county fair mm -hmm. in this mountain village in Japan. And, you know, it was so interesting. I was like, I don't know what to expect, but everyone over there was amazing. But they just loved the music of Stephen Foster. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so bizarre to me to be singing My Old Kentucky Home to this mostly Japanese audience and right. having 75% of them singing the words along with you. I'm like, right. how do you know My Old Kentucky Home? Like, you don't even live <laughs> within the same hemisphere. And so it was it was fascinating. But that's actually the third time that Stephen Foster Story has made a trip to Japan. They toured in 1985, uh, in 1997, and then again in uh, 2013. Different different times. Every each time was a different tour, different situation. But uh, you know, Stephen Foster's music is global. It's not just known here in Kentucky or in you know Pittsburgh, where Stephen was from. Uh, or just this country, you know, everybody, if you don't know Oh Suzanne or Camp Town Races, you've heard the tune, yeah, I know you have, um, especially here in Kentucky, obviously My Old Kentucky Home, anybody who watches the Kentucky Derby, they probably know that song as well, but uh, it was fascinating to me that these folks over in Japan, and I've also heard in Germany, and a lot of it stems from World War II, you know, these these soldiers from America were over there, and, you know, they brought things like bourbon and Stephen Foster's music, you know, for example, like just as those things. So uh, it was really cool to kind of experience the passion for music and kind of see music as a universal language. You know, right. I couldn't say hello to these people, but we could sing Mountain Kentucky Home together. And that right. was such a bizarre thing, but I loved it. We have continued to meet weekly um, with the team who are working on the amphitheater renovation and then rebuild. Um, and we're working on both of those phases at the same time. Um, the renovation phase is, represents approximately three weeks worth of structural um, construction and electrical work that will allow us to gain occupancy and utilize the amphitheater for this summer. Um, and right now we're in 
a bit of a holding pattern waiting for approval from the state. Um, we expected that approval just over a week ago um, and what we found was a new process um, that we have to go through. That process is underway and we expect next week um, or even early next week um, to have that process in place and to actually get official approval to begin that work. Right now we don't have approval to begin any renovation. Casting the Stephen Foster story, Mary Poppins, um, and also lining up our technical staff is one of the most challenging things about my job. Um, I'm, I'm working with a, a limited budget. Um, I'm hiring a hundred people, essentially, all said and done. We have a hundred employees. Um, and it's, it's a challenge to pull all the pieces together I'm fortunate in that so many of our employees want to return, both off stage and on stage, and so that's a known element that I can count on and I rely on, uh, and so I only really have to focus on about half the employees that we need, um, but it's still a challenge. Uh, we have plenty of time to get the work done, and, and we all feel absolutely confident that it will get done in time, and we will start our 60th anniversary season just as planned. And so comes the long-awaited opening night. And along with it comes a rainy forecast. On the phones with meteorologists, checking the radar every second. Trying to figure out when it's time to make that crucial decision. But you know what they say in the theater world, the show must go on. And so at this time, we are planning to start at 845. That is impending that the rain stop and we can reset the stage at that time. As soon as the rain lightens up, we're going to start squeegeeing and you guys will be cleared to preset. Uh, so just still stand by for your presets, but we're hoping that to be in the next 10, 15 minutes that you guys can start preset. Uh, but go ahead and make preparations accordingly to do the show outdoors. Thank you, guys. So after about an hour of waiting for the rain to stop, drying off the seats, and squeegeeing the water off the stage, the long-awaited 60th season of the Stephen Foster story was going to happen. And for just a moment, Johnny Warren got to sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. And with all the extra drama added to opening night, anticipation was very high. You could feel the excitement through the cast and crew.
Needless to say, it was a magical night. And even after the rain, the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. And several other people are heavily invested into the Stephen Foster story. All right, so tell me your names if you would. I'm Wesley Hammond, and that's Frank Hammond, and if, he's my dad. Okay, he's yes. your dad, and uh, so what are you guys both doing here tonight? I was in the original cast of the show, 59. And this is my fifth year in the show as well, so I've been here uh, since 2013 and 2018, my fifth year in the 60th anniversary. So you guys are aware that this, this season almost didn't happen? Absolutely. We were very worried and we, we called our Congress people and did everything we could and, and we were very happy that the show happened. We were very worried about it. I'm delighted it happened. It's, it's my 60th year. It was my big deal. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we, uh, we love the Bus story and since I was a little boy we've been coming here every summer and so it's such an important tradition to the community and we're really glad to be able to be a part of it and, and to can help continue it into the safety of the earth. Well, I want to thank you guys for making this night just a little more magical. Oh, great. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, guys. So how are you guys feeling tonight knowing that uh, this is the opening night for the 60th season that One, almost two, didn't happen? That's right. It's One, exciting. Three, okay. One, We're ready. Two, I mean, we've been looking One, forward to this. Two, three, and this nine, just nine, means nine, that much more to two, us that they three, had to fight so hard four. to get it back on. Yeah. We're very excited. Uh, rehearsals have gone so smoothly. Everybody's been so fired up, and and uh, the director Johnny Warren has done a lot of uh, new little details this year that we're going to add. So it's a it's going to be a great summer, and uh, we are so excited to to get started here for the 60th season. So yeah, uh, you just mentioned that Johnny. I mean. Johnny's been here for a long time, but I don't know if he's worked as hard as he has had to do this off season. No, this was amazing. The, the time he put in, the contacts he had to make, the hours he put in, the people he had to just work with and get get to build support. It's been amazing. I've said he didn't get Christmas, he didn't get New Year's, his wife didn't get Valentine's Day, so you know he's. Uh, He's put in a lot of long hours, but it, this is this is the payoff, and we're, we're excited to be here and excited to have our 60th season. And how long have you guys been uh, been around here? Let's see, put us together, we might get about 60. Yes. Yeah, uh, this like is my 26th year. I've been associated with uh, Stephen Foster. And this is my 29th year to actually be in the show over a period of 39. I started when I was in college as a summer job, thinking I'd do it one summer, and 39 years later, I'm still doing it. So. I started when I was 16, working backstage, and put, just put 30 years in between working backstage and getting to be on stage. Well, I guess you could almost consider this a lifestyle for you, too. We sort enjoy of. it. <laughs> we yeah. do. There's, it's not just us. We have a whole group down here who put a lot of years into this show. We love this show. And we've got some of our best friends with people we work with down here in this show. Well, this is one of the few places you can work where after you get done with work, you say, okay, where, where are we going to go now? You know, most of the time you're getting away from your co workers. Not down here. We've got a great, we call it the Foster family. Yeah. <laughs> now, I myself following this story have been blown away by the love and dedication and the team effort it's taken to get this 60th season back together. So that wraps up this episode of PLG TV Spotlight. I'm Matt Gordon. I'll see you next time.